Hello guys and welcome to my studio. My name is Miriam and I'm teaching watercolors. Today we are going to paint some pretty birds uh, starting with Inuit. And most of the painting will be with Inuit. But we will follow the colors on the paper we put on first and then work from that. So it's quite an interesting technique. So I really hope you are up for it. And of course, feel free to use some other colors than the ones I'm using. If you have some favorite colors, that will be perfect as well. But let's get started. <laughs> And here's our materials. Some brushes, 12, 6 and 2. And we need some knit gum as well. And the colors, maroon, yellow ochre, olive green, forest green, turquoise green deep, gray, ultramarine and blue gray deep. And of course some clean water as well. And some masking tape. To tape your paper down to a board. And we are working wet and wet, so that's quite necessary. And here you see the finished pa painting that you can use for your pencil drawing as well. So now I'm taping down my paper to the board. And then we can begin to paint. But first I will remove some of the pencil lines with my knit gum so that they won't shine too much through the paint. And then I go ahead and wet the whole paper with my last la, 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 <laughs> large size toothbrush. And now it's time to drop in some colors on the wet paper. And I begin with the olive green. And then I go in with some of the turquoise green. Deep, it's called. And I'm using my Kurisaki Gansai colors. Here's the forest green. I just put the colors in randomly all over the paper and you can see I've also put in some ultramarine. And here I go in with some of the yellow ochre. And uh, these colors will dry up lighter uh, once they are dry. And after the paper has dried a little bit, it's still damp, I go in with some clean water drops. Uh, as you can see me do here. This will create a very nice light effect because I want the birds to sort of be in a, a light, in the sunlight. And here I have just mixed up all my colors, uh, quite a watery mix, and now uh, I have I allowed the painting to dry completely. And then I begin to work on the birds. And here I Wet the area first and then I begin to drop in some colors afterwards. But um, it's important to work the area first uh, because we want the colors to flow together. And I'm looking at what color do I have on the paper. And I could see there was yellow on the paper so then I go to my yellow and put that in there. And I'm sort of trying to follow the background on the bird as well. Mm. So the bird will be similar to the background but with darker colors. I hope it makes sense. <laughs> but I really think that gives a very pretty effect. Um, yeah, so this is a painting style you can use on other things as well. Make a light background with your favorite colors and then put in some motifs that you like. And here I continue with the upper bird and I wet the area that I'm going to paint and then I just look at the paper to see what colors align from the background and then I drop in some of that colors. Or some of that color. And I really want the colors to blend nicely together, so we won't have any hard edges. 
And here I dropped in some of olive green and now I see some yellow in the background and then I go in with the yellow color. And usually I go uh, along the line, the outline of the birds and then I put the color there and allow it to flow out. And here I continue with a leaf, so I wet the area and drop in the color. As you can see here, it's the turquoise color. And I also put in some of the ultramarine here. I really love to have colors blend together, so usually I will put at least two colors on the leaves and also on the birds. But yeah, I look at what colors uh, is there in the background. Well, I felt like the colors were a little bit too strong here on the leaves, so I'm going in trying to remove some of the colors. And do I do that with a damp brush and then I just lift off color. And here I'm continuing to work on the leaves. And as you can see, I put in some olive green, then some yellow ochre, and now some ultramarine. And I often go in with a damp brush to help the colors flow together. And if you know me, you know that I love colors and I do love uh, to try out different color combinations and see how they work together. And this, I must say, is one of my favorite color combinations at the moment. I really love these colors. And yeah, I think this painting, because it's quite light, it will look very pretty in a white frame and you know it could be suitable in a hallway or in a children's room or something like that and you could also put in a quote or something like that later on um, yes there's endless possibilities to how to use your painting once it's done now I'm switching to a size 2 brush because I'm going to paint the beacon of the bird and I do that with the maroon red color. And you know this was actually be the only two places in the painting that there's red but um, a little hint of that I felt like that was quite beautiful. And the dominating colors in this painting are the greens and blues. And then we have yellow and then a little touch of the red. And sometimes when you do that, um, it gives a very good harmony in your painting. That uh, they are not all dominating because then it can be a bit confusing to look at. So that's good to keep in mind that you have one dominating color. One does not as much and another one does very little of. Um, so that's a good tip to remember when you uh, are putting together a painting. And you can always use neutral colors uh, on top of this or together with this I would say. Um, because neutral colors are neutral and they help to light up the more bright colors.
and I continue to work on the birds. I'm using the same method um, on the birds and on the leaves. And yeah, here I paint the foot of the bird uh, and the eye as well. And I'm using the blue gray deep to do that. I want these areas to be quite dark. Here I paint in some branches in a lighter color than the main branch and I'm also using some of the colors from the background to drop in here and there to make some interest in the branch. And when I'm sitting here looking at this, I think it could be interesting to make this in some brownish colors as well. It could be fun to see how that would look with these birds. So if you make a sketch, um, then try and make two versions of this painting to see how different it will look if you use perhaps more neutral colors. Mm, I think that could be interesting. <laughs> Perhaps they will look more realistic in that way. I don't know, but it was just a thought. Actually, um, this sketch I'm using for this painting I've, I've used for another video I made with birds. So yeah, it's always good to have some nice sketches. I always uh, keep mine, so I have them. Um, just in case I get inspired to do a similar thing, but perhaps with some other colors or in a different style. So I could, re I would recommend you to do that as well. And here I'm just making a little bit of definition on the wings uh, using the yellow ochre. Because the wing was quite uh, light, so I felt something was needing. And I'm using my size two brush to go in and make some definitions here and there. And I also make some. Oh, I don't know the word. These lines there are on leaves. <laughs> And that will help them to stand out a little bit in the painting. The ones without whatever they are called, <laughs> they will fall a little bit back in the painting and then those with more definition will go forward. And here I just felt like uh, something was needed, so I painted in an extra leaf. And now for some splattering, I'm using my Ultramarine. And you can go wild or you can just make a little bit of splattering. And then I dry off the painting with my hair dryer to make sure everything is dry before I remove the masking tape. And here I'm using my hair dryer as well because I don't want the masking tape to tear the paper. Yes, I really love that. And this is the next day and after I've been looking at it a little bit, I felt like something was needing, needed on this bird. So I decided to put in some, some more colors on the back of the bird. So I wet the area first and then I drop in some olive green, which is also in the tail. So it will look more uh, combined, I would say. So I drop in some of the olive green as well here, just to finish off the painting. 
And it's a good thing to leave your painting for the next day and then look at it and see if you are satisfied with how everything looks. It's really good to have a break sometimes. Yes? And I'm working a little bit on the leg as well, as I thought it was a little bit too light compared to the bird's leg or lower leg or foot. <laughs> Whatever you call it. <laughs> mm. So I put in some olive green, I believe it is, and some yellow ochre as well. And I go up a little bit on the stomach. I felt like the bird was a little bit too turquoise all over, so I dropped in some more color. And here I go in with some of the olive green. That was it from me today. I really hope you could use this tutorial and I hope to see you again in another video. Be well and bye for now.